Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Foreign Correspondents Club of Japan. My name is Khaldun Azari. I'm moderating this event today, and I'm the president of this club. And uh, I would like first to introduce our main uh, speakers. Uh, to my right, uh, uh, former Defense Minister, uh, Mr. Satoshi Morimoto. He is a Mast Asia Chairman, Councillor, and uh, uh, also at Tsukuba uh, Tsuko Hoko University. And to his right is Mr. Warren Edge. He is CEO of Mast Communication Japan Defense KK. And today's event is uh, about uh, geopolitical and military operational challenge, challenges facing Japan and its allies, MAST uh, Asia 2017. And you will hear a lot about this uh, event. And uh, after uh, today's press conference that will end at uh, 4 o'clock sharp, we will have some um, gathering. You are all invited and uh, we will have some refreshments for about one hour. So please stay and uh, you can talk to our guest speaker with uh, getting more details. And the event today will be about, uh, about 20 minutes uh, presentations, and then that will be followed by questions and answers. I think uh, Mr. Warren will start the talk today. Uh, without uh, further ado, uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our guest speakers today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for um, taking time out of your busy schedules to, to be here. Um, I, I would just like to discuss in broad terms <clears throat> the framework of MAST this, this year. This is the second biennial MAST, which is Maritime Air Systems and Technologies Conference and Exhibition. Um, last, the last time we were, were in uh, Yokohama was with the backdrop of the uh, three principles policies and since then obviously the, the agency ATLA has been formed so um, very timely again for us to, to come back. <coughs> um, you will all receive a, a press pack. Um, so I hope you've handed in your business cards. Um, so I won't bore you with too many details of where we, we would like you to be and when at the show. Um, you have a couple of weeks to prepare for that. Um, but in, in a just quick outline of what we have, it's a, a three-day event. And we have a number of, of keynote sessions, uh, some, some official uh, functions, open a ribbon cutting ceremony, and uh, and a VIP um, plenary session days two and days three. Um, I think those of you, and I see a lot of familiar faces that did attend the first show, um, were probably fairly impressed with, with the number of VIPs that we had attend. Um, it was obviously eyes were all on, on Japan at that time. I think that, that hasn't changed. Um, in fact, if anything, um, our our registrations are up some 50%, and that f filters through to our VIPs. You will all receive this VIP list, but so far we're looking at re looking after chiefs of navy, um, parliamentary officials, ministers, procurement directors, and senior scientists, um, really from around the world. And looking at that, this is pretty much the countries that we have registered at the moment. We have other countries that are in the pipeline to confirm. The, another major difference on the trade show is we're nearly double the size of the first show. And those of you that remember the first event, you, you will, uh, you'll see a number of country pavilions. So this, this really is going to be a very international showcase of people that are either already doing business in defense in Japan or looking to do business in defense in Japan. I'll leave this screen up <clears throat> because this will be your point of contact at the show. Um, my closing is, is to hand over to Professor Morimoto, but what we've tried to do this year is, is frame the entire show around um, four four themes. So our opening day, we will discuss the, op the operation of the policy, sorry, um, the reasons why this event is important, the reason why these conference sessions will be important. So focusing on the policy aspects um, in, in, in Japan and surrounding neighbors. Following that, we'll have a plenary session on the operational aspects. So what are the, the friendly navies doing um, to combat or aid the, the policy issues. 
Our third plenary session will be on, on technologies. What are, what are the equipments that are needed to follow through the operational requirements? And the last plenary session will be on technology transfer. So ha having a new, the acquisition technology and logistics agency, how, how is that looking to other organizations like DIT in the UK? Um, and DSTG in, in, in Australia, these established organizations that are well versed in exporting defense and defense best practices. So that really frames the event. Um, I can't talk knowledgeably on those, so I will hand over to my esteemed colleague, Professor Morimoto. Thank you, Mr. Warning. Uh, we are very uh, pleased to uh, host mass meeting uh, in Asia in 2017 at Makuhari Mese in Chiba Prefecture, Japan, uh, next month for three days from uh, June 12th to uh, 14th. Uh, as he uh, indicated, uh, we have uh, second time of mass uh, exhibition uh, fair uh, in Japan. I'm a chairman of conference uh, mass fair uh, is organized mass company. However, we have official support of uh, government of Japan, especially uh, Ministry of Defense and the, the METI and, and the MOFA Ministry of Foreign Affairs. We have big uh, defense ex e equipment and technology fair and international conference and speeches. Uh, we have many. Uh, VIP uh, from uh, not only uh, Europe and the United States, but also uh, Asian Pacific uh, nations, uh, including Australia. We have many uh, important uh, speech, uh, including a French General Secretary of France, Commander of the 7th Fleet of US Navy, and Assistant Chief of Naval Staff Royal Navy uh, UK, and also uh, Vice Minister of uh, Minister of Defense, and also Commissioner uh, of ATRA, uh, Ministry of Defense in Japan. Also, uh, we plan to have a tour uh, visit to, uh, uh, to uh, uh, US Navy in Japan, Zainichi Begun, and also uh, the headquarter of Self Defense Maritime Forces in Yokosuka. As you know, uh, we have uh, facing a uh, serious uh, threat of North Korea's uh, nuclear missile uh, development, also a uh, serious concerns of South China Sea and East China Sea uh, issues. Because uh, maritime security is a uh, most serious security uh, issues in the regions. A mass conference and affair is a good opportunity to uh, display and demonstrate the defense equipment and technology on the maritime issue. Also a, a nice chance to exchange a view and the concept of maritime uh, security, uh, especially on the cooperation between uh, Europe and Asia, among very distinguished uh, expert and naval officers. I hope uh, most distinguished uh, media people to take a look at this fair and to join to discuss the top uh, with the top defense expert and policy makers uh, in this occasion. Uh, as he indicated, we have uh, many uh, program, but uh, I think uh, if you uh, take a look at uh, whole uh, pro programs. Uh, the last time we have uh, almost more than 3,000 people, I, we expect uh, more than double of uh, people to join this uh, uh, fair in Chiba Prefecture, Mark Hari uh, Mese. We are very pleased to uh, answer the questions as you wish uh, the remaining time. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, that was brief. and. Uh, <laughs> Uh, for what we'd like to open the floor, <coughs> Tim, for your questions. Uh, <coughs> uh, Tim Kelly, Reuters. 
Uh, I'd like to ask uh, Professor Morimoto a question about Donald Trump. Um, <laughs> just for reasons. So during, during the uh, US election campaign, there was a lot of concern in Japan uh, and within Asia generally that his election would uh, lead to some um, partial withdrawal of the US from the region, that he would cede uh, US dominance uh, to China, kind of a, I guess, a, a Monroe doctrine, a new type of Monroe doctrine. Since his election, uh, Japan seems a lot more reassured um, that the uh, situation, that the US commitment to Asia is not uh, going to change and that um, the US alliance remains as it is. However, given the situation in North Korea and the need for the US uh, to gain cooperation from China, do you think this concern about some kind of um, partial US drawback from Asia still remains? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> I, uh, I would like to speak very frankly on uh, my uh, personal and private uh, uh, impression and uh, uh, to the uh, U.S. Uh, government. The past, as you know very well, the uh, White House uh, has not de designated uh, many political appointees, and uh, uh, therefore uh, we have, quite frankly, we have no many uh, counterpart, not only the um, Pentagon, but also uh, State Department to uh, discuss uh, policy matters uh, intensively. Uh, and uh, that is uh, one uh, uh, problem for us. But uh, maybe uh, we can expect uh, many uh, political point will be uh, assigned and uh, approved by uh, Capitol Hill sometime by the end of this year. So we are expecting a bureaucratic procedure to designate and to approve by uh, Congress. That is the first one. Second is that uh, uh, although uh, as we uh, look at the defense uh, budget for next fiscal year of the United States, uh, uh, almost more than 10% of defense expenditure will be, uh, be expected. But however, new uh, US government never refer to the how to uh, manage the military posture in this uh, area. They never say rebalancing. But uh, we expect that the uh, United States will not change uh, substantial uh, military posture uh, in, in this area uh, to uh, sustain the um, commitment and the presence uh, uh, in, in this region. So I do not worry about, but uh, quite frankly, uh, we would like to uh, know more uh, detail what kind of uh, changing of military uh, posture uh, uh, under this administration, especially uh, uh, U.S. Navy and Air Force and the Marine Corps. That is the second issue. But third issue is that uh, we do not uh, want to uh, United States has very uh, close relationship, especially allied relationship with not only Japan, but also South Korea. Uh, however, uh, I personally uh, to, uh, did not follow the NATO summit meeting, uh, uh, which was held uh, yesterday. But uh, as uh, Mr. Trump uh, indicated in his campaign that uh, we have to pay fair uh, contribution as uh, U.S. allies. But so far, the uh, NATO side, they uh, reaffirmed the 
political commitment to increase the defense budget more than 2% of GDP. Uh, that was made in 2014. But uh, we have uh, no uh, uh, request or requirement to increase our uh, defense contribution, especially defense exp expenditure in terms of uh, 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 GNP ratio. Uh, but uh, maybe uh, we have uh, uh, any uh, opportunity to discuss uh, in detail what kind of contribution we should to reinforce the US-Japan uh, alliance. Uh, to sustain the deterrence capability uh, in these regions jointly associated uh, between both countries. That is my, uh, my uh, feeling and the impression and the uh, agenda in the future. Thank you. Um, Isabel Reynolds from Bloomberg. Um, I'd like to ask about cooperation on defense equipment. Um, last time the MAST event was held, obviously there was a lot of excitement about potential sale of submarines to Australia. That didn't work out. Um, do you have any thoughts on uh, what Japan can learn from that experience and how it should proceed going forward on cooperation with other countries in equipment sales and so on? Uh, I think that, that is uh, one of the key agenda, how we manage uh, transfer of defense equipment and technology, not only uh, uh, some European country in the United States, but also uh, Asian Pacific uh, uh, nations. I do not uh, want to touch upon the key issues which maybe uh, Dr. Watanabe, Commissioner of Atura, I will refer to uh, uh, these issues in his uh, keynote speech or the first session of uh, mass meeting. But I have just the uh, impression that yes, we have learned a lot on the experience to deal with uh, some issues in Australia. But in addition to, uh, we have uh, many kind of uh, negotiation talking uh, with not only uh, France and the UK and the United States, but also uh, uh, some ASEAN country and Middle East country as well. But of course, well, uh, so far, uh, we cannot uh, make an announcement uh, what kind of uh, equipment uh, transfer has been uh, successful. But uh, quite frankly, uh, we have uh, many uh, issues in going on. Uh, under the negotiation uh, with another country. Uh, we hope that we uh, 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 study the lesson which we uh, uh, got uh, from our negotiation with Australia on some issues. Uh, but uh, in addition to, I have some. Uh, sentiment that uh, still our defense industry has some uh, concern uh, on the, uh, how to say, the, some sort of a reputation risk. And uh, uh, although uh, government tried to encourage our defense industry, uh, some uh, defense industry are very cautious to uh, to uh, transfer the defense equipment to another country. That is, quite uh, frankly, uh, our uh, bureaucratic uh, uh, concerns uh, for uh, not only ATRA, but also uh, some other ministry, uh, including uh, METI or uh, uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs. If I can just add to that, Isabel, I think um, the opening session will be a, a good time to raise that question directly to Dr. Watanabe, and apologies to everyone um, that he's not here today, um, but he will be a major part of the show. Um, 
as will Atla. Atla have got a very big presence in the, on the floor plan. And um, following on from what Mr. Morimoto was just saying, um, I, I think there is a definite movement to be more outwardly promoting, um, which was Atlas' an intention for the last couple of years. Um, but what you will see by visiting the trade show is all the major defense companies or major companies with defense products will have their own big booths. So whereas the only sole booth we had really from a Japanese company last time was NEC, you will now be able to see a booth with Mitsubishi, Kawasaki, Hitachi, MES. All the major Japanese companies will have their own distinct presence. So um, obviously I'm as an organizer very thrilled about that, but I think that gives you a good opportunity as journalists to go and talk to these companies. My name is Kosuke Takashi, uh, Tokyo correspondent of Gen's Defense Weekly. I have a question to Professor Morimoto. Uh, do you think the US is really serious about attacking the North Korea as a preemptive attack or a preventive attack? Because if the US is really serious about attacking US, uh, attacking North Korea, they would immediately issue the non-combat evacuation order, but they haven't done that. So what do you think of the, this uh, US seriousness about attacking North Korea? That's it. Uh, quite frankly, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but however, I believe uh, defense secretary's uh, remarks are not to make uh, any uh, Preemptive attack to the North Korea is very risky business. Uh, as you know, well, uh, even our mm, preemptive attack will be successful to destroy the some, uh, not only a nuclear facility, but also a, a missile launching site or a base. But we have uh, three uh, problems. One is that uh, uh, we cannot destroy everything. And, uh, uh, and also, uh, if uh, they have a remaining, uh, not only a nuclear, but also a ballistic missile, they uh, uh, will uh, make a re uh, retaliations uh, against not only US, but also our neighbors. That is a very risky business. That is the first one. The second is that uh, they have a large scale of conventional uh, military forces which are staying, which are deploying uh, almost 100 kilometers north from a uh, demilitarized zone. And uh, the South Korea cannot uh, react or defense uh, from a uh, long range uh, artillery or rocket. Uh, that is quite frankly quite different with a uh, with, uh, uh, ballistic missile. Uh, so uh, looking at the ROK, I don't know how many uh, foreign people are staying in that uh, soil, but uh, at least uh, 200,000 uh, Americans, uh, civilian. Uh, including uh, U.S. forces stationing in South Korea. And also we have uh, almost uh, six uh, uh, the, uh, thousand, uh, not only tourists, but also uh, uh, long-staying long uh, uh, Japanese, uh, including U.S. and Japan. I think uh, uh, several uh, hundred thousand uh, foreign people uh, staying in our OK. We, we, we cannot... Uh, warning them uh, because if we well uh, North Korea notice and and also uh, they may make a preemptive attack against us so very risky business uh, of course well, evacuation is not so easy business but sad is that uh, uh, we uh, our policy uh, is uh, not allow the North Korea to use uh, mm, 
nuclear equipped ballistic missile against us. Uh, not to uh, make a preemptive attack to destroy them. That is a very uh, risky business. I think uh, that is not a realistic uh, uh, approach and effective approach as well. So our uh, basic, uh, not policy, but our basic thinking is to reinforce our deterrence capability if uh, they uh, launch nuclear equipped uh, missile against us, uh, we uh, will make a full scale of deterioration against them uh, to destroy their not only political leadership, but also uh, their conventional force uh, at a few days. And, and uh, how to encourage, how to persuade North Korea to understand uh, uh, effective retaliation uh, against them. So, um, but uh, I do not think they will give up uh, to uh, make a success successful uh, nuclear uh, equipped uh, ballistic missile which will be reach the US continental. Uh, so uh, I think this is a very uh, difficult job. We have no best scenario, quite frankly, but preemptive attack is the worst, one of the worst scenarios. That is sure. That is my feeling. I may be wrong, but uh, I don't know. Thank you. Next question. Tom? Tom? Tim, yes, go ahead. Uh, Professor Morimoto, um, I'd like to ask you about, so um, by the, um, the strengthening of ballistic missile defense in Japan. So the government is currently looking at Aegis Ashore as one option or the THAAD system as the other. Um, it appears that Aegis Ashore has uh, won the day. Um, it's flexibility, familiarity, and it, it seems like a cheaper system than THAAD. Uh, and would need fewer sites, which is a big consideration in a heavily populated country uh, like Japan. I'd just like to ask you what camp you're in, in terms of THAAD or EGIS, or which system do you think is more suitable for Japan? Or would, could Japan even consider having a mixed system of EGIS and THAAD? Okay, um, the question is very clear, but the answer is very uh, <laughs> uh, quite frankly, uh, we have a very uh, deep uh, discussion, not only uh, ruling parties, but also uh, bureaucrats. Uh, and uh, final decision has not been made yet. Uh, we are thinking very seriously. And uh, we have uh, known the many uh, uh, agenda and uh, scenario and options on how to the improve uh, missile, missile defense uh, system. So far, we have uh, some sort of simulations uh, based on the scenario, uh, which is the best uh, mix of missile defense system to protect us. As US, as you indicate, uh, the is is assure is one of the options. As you know very well, we have uh, uh, so far six uh, easy ships, uh, but uh, they equip uh, um, standard missile three block one A. That will not reach the high altitude uh, incoming uh, ballistic missile. Therefore, uh, we have uh, almost 11 years of uh, joint development uh, project uh, between US and Japan uh, to uh, make uh, uh, improvement of, uh, of uh, capability of uh, uh, standard missile 3 uh, from uh, Block 1A to Block 2A. Maybe, maybe we can make a faster testing sometime next month. Maybe uh, if we'll be successful, 
we uh, intend to equip uh, Block 2A to uh, additional for uh, uh, destroyer. So, uh, so far we have four and, and additional uh, for total eight. Uh, uh, is this uh, ship will be uh, be uh, be deployed? Of course, well, the United States Navy will be deployed already uh, seven, eight, eight, eight ships uh, uh, to the U.S. Navy uh, in Japan. Uh, but, uh, uh, however, that is not enough for uh, for. Uh, Mid term, uh, mid term, you know, no, mid cost uh, uh, missile defense system. So uh, we uh, intend to uh, think about very seriously how to uh, equip uh, easy assure uh, uh, on the land. That is a fix. Uh, and we, we, the easy assure is not mobile. But uh, if we can deploy the two easy ashore, that covered almost all Japan. That is a uh, uh, in uh, mid mid course uh, missile defense system. In addition to we have thinking uh, terminal uh, missile defense system. So far we have uh, uh, Patriot Pak three, but uh, we uh, improve uh, Pak three to uh, Pak three uh, 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 Pack three MSE type. We have six uh, uh, um, Pack three uh, battalions uh, stationing in all all, all land, but uh, <coughs> that uh, uh, procurement of third missile is is very uh, effective. But the problem is that the cost and uh, criteria is. Uh, cost performance, cost effectiveness, and also uh, where we can deploy the third missile and also TPY through radar. Uh, we have no many uh, self-defense air force base. So uh, we are thinking, uh, location? Location? No, but yeah, but location, <laughs> yes. Uh, political, Political, political aspect of location. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but third is, uh, is one of the options. So uh, if we can uh, uh, procure the third, but how many uh, we should third, we should deploy the third uh, in order to reinforce missile defense capability? Uh, that is a key issue. We have no idea. Uh, six is uh, too much, but, uh, but uh, some people say two. Two is a two is a is a small. Two is a two is a little. Uh, but uh, some people say no, no. Uh, the maximum is a nine, but nine is uh, I think uh, too much. But six uh, is also uh, almost a one trillion yen. It's it's too expensive. How to? Uh, Persuade ordinary people to uh, understand and support uh, missile defense uh, system procurement or not. That is a key issue, not only for uh, uh, defense budget for next fiscal year, uh, but, uh, but also a uh, 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 new uh, midterm defense program, which will be beginning uh, next next year. That is answers which I, I can so far. Next question. <coughs> yes, Isabel. Isabel Reynolds from Bloomberg again. Um, uh, when it comes to missile defense, uh, some people in the LDP think it's more effective to uh, counterattack, as it were. What's your view on whether it would be more cost effective? To, for Japan to have Tomahawk missiles instead of another layer of missile defense? It's a quite a different context of a mass meeting, but... Uh, <laughs> um, you think? May I? Yes. Okay. Uh, 
Yes, I know. Uh, I know there are sensei chair, the study group of LDP uh, to submit the final conclusion to the prime minister's office a month ago, indicating that uh, we have to improve uh, missile defense system. Also, second is the counterattack capability. Uh, we, we never say counterattack capability. We are kogeki kogeki uh, I do not. I, I don't like this name, name, but if we can say the counterattack capability. Counterattack capability consists of three elements. One is that uh, uh, early warning satellite uh, to uh, take a look at the missile and also uh, to uh, 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 inspect and uh, detect the uh, location or existing of a uh, uh, launching missile, no, no, ballistic missile uh, exactly. Uh, so uh, in this sense, we have to procure the, some sort of uh, early warning uh, satellite system such as a CW or something. It's very expensive. Uh, we have not. We have not yet. That is the first one. Second is that uh, we have to Procure the more intensive uh, uh, electronic warfare capability to uh, destroy their uh, detect detecting system. That is a uh, that is a uh, more electronic uh, measure uh, to destroy their surveillance capability. Uh, not allow. Uh, for our uh, uh, combat aircraft to be uh, uh, to be uh, destroyed, that is the second one. The second is that uh, second issue is that uh, maybe uh, we we try to do the best. Maybe uh, we can procure. It. The third is a uh, more uh, uh, sensitive issue. That is a uh, uh, prejudice. Pre PMG, PGM, PGM measures, uh, including a cruising missile or a long range standoff air to surface missile to uh, destroy uh, the target uh, uh, perfect, perfectly. We have not uh, such kind of uh, uh, defense system yet. Uh, so uh, the first one and the third one is uh, that uh, very uh, serious agenda, uh, which uh, US and Japan uh, have to uh, discuss to allow the United States to transfer this technology to us. Uh, politically, uh, legally, uh, since uh, it is already clear. But, uh, but uh, uh, an another issue that uh, even if we have such kind of capability, if we use this capability to destroy uh, target pinpoint as a pinpoint, uh, how to deal with the deterioration uh, to us? Uh, unless we have a comprehensive defense system, uh, this is very risky business to use uh, counter-attack capability to destroy the North Korea's uh, missile site or nuclear facility. So uh, yes, we have to procure such a capability, but uh, we have to use this capability very carefully. Uh, 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 we cannot do, uh, use this uh, capability without any uh, very close coordination with the US forces uh, and the uh, South Korean government. Otherwise, we cannot uh, do that. That is my uh, sentiment. Thank you, sir. Let me ask about MAST. <laughs> MAST, oh, please. <laughs> MAST, yes. yes. Uh, sir, uh, do you have an uh, air show during the uh, the event, and do we are we expect to see some airplanes or helicopters or something? And uh, I have a question to Professor Morimoto. The the mode and the social uh, 
mood in Japan is is called the peace loving country. So, do you think the the public will be happy with this uh, event, or we, we would expect some opposition that Japan is becoming more military oriented country? Thank you. Um, well, very quickly, there is no air show, um, although MAST is maritime and air. Um, is pretty much uh, maritime defense, whether that be from uh, undersea, surface, air, or space. Um, so you will see displays of, of, of aerospace technologies, um, but there is no air show. Uh, I think uh, maybe uh, you can notice that the many uh, com ordinary people are uh, coming to take a look at uh, this uh, uh, defense equipment fair. I think uh, and mainly because our people and our society uh, strongly wish to uh, improve our defense industry uh, capability or technology uh, to uh, transfer uh, more uh, defensive uh, equipment, not only uh, Asian country but also uh, uh, some European country as well. We do not want this uh, equipment to be used uh, uh, for uh, war fighting. But however, uh, our defense equipment is uh, exclusively a defense uh, uh, nature of equipment. The technology is very high uh, quality. Uh, therefore, I don't think ordinary people has uh, strong resistance. Uh, thing, uh, uh, sentiment uh, against uh, this uh, defense equipment technology fair. So. Thomas Sullivan, um, I'm a guest here today. Warren, I wonder if I could ask your opinion. Uh, obviously, the NATO summit has, has just uh, finished in the last uh, 24 uh, hours, I guess, and it seems like the President of the United States has refused to endorse Article 5 of the NATO, NATO Treaty. So do you, do you think that will um, result in a buildup uh, of uh, defense equipment in the Baltic countries? And also, do you think it might lead to some nervousness in Asia, uh, in, in South Korea and Japan about the the uh, you know the reliability of the American security uh, arrangements. I, I don't think really I'm the right person to ask about uh, you know the political agendas and and, and so on. I mean, uh, happy to organise the the conference and exhibition, but I think the uh, as something that will probably stimulate discussion throughout the the delegates. Um, not not something for me to answer, I'm afraid. <laughs> well, uh, we have no additional comment, but. Uh, <laughs> If a I uh, question. <laughs> would like to uh, uh, speak a uh, little bit uh, frankly, I think uh, NATO change, changing a nature. Uh, after the, the end of the Cold War, the main theme and uh, role and mission of NATO uh, shifting uh, from uh, how to deal with the threat from a uh, former Soviet Union to the crisis management and the out of area activities. But however, uh, since uh, Russia's uh, 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 engage uh, not only uh, uh, Crimea and the uh, east part of uh, Ukraine, also uh, 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 military operation in Syria in 2015, I think NATO uh, is uh, changing the nature back to the original role as a mission of Article 5 of or North Atlantic Treaty Organization, uh, mainly because uh, they have a very strong uh, threat from uh, uh, East of Russia and uh, from south, uh, they have uh, immigration and refugees and also uh, 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 terrorism bias. Uh, but therefore, I think uh, uh, I think uh, 
looking at the history of nature, the NATO summit, which was held the day before yesterday, is a very serious turning point of a basic role of, of NATO itself. Uh, so uh, most of the people, uh, especially uh, uh, southern part of uh, Europe, uh, facing a serious financial uh, problem, the most of the NATO countries uh, uh, intend to implement uh, to increase uh, defense budget more, more than two percent of GNP. GNP. That is not uh, that is not because uh, pressure from uh, Washington, but also uh, that is uh, most important uh, uh, criteria for NATO country to uh, secure their regional uh, peace and stability. Uh, I think uh, this is uh, important uh, agenda for NATO. Defense, uh, I have a question to Morimoto-san. Um, uh, Japan already develops the X2, uh, the prototype of the sixth generation fighter. Uh, do you think Japan should uh, develop sixth generation fighter domestically or developed with the US? I know we had a big issue in 1980s to produce a F2. What do you think as of, the, as of today about X2? Uh, that is also uh, uh, one of the top agenda of defense uh, posture, uh, especially uh, uh, in the next round of midterm defense uh, program. Of course, we have not decided uh, yet. Still, we have uh, long standing uh, discussion uh, among ministries and of bureaucrat and of defense industry and the policymakers. But it's very uh, uh, difficult uh, problem. We have many uh, criteria. One is that the uh, cost. The second is that uh, whether we should produce some new equipment by ourselves. Otherwise, we uh, have to explore the, some opportunity or chance uh, to joint uh, development and uh, production with another country such as the US or UK. And uh, uh, the lastly, uh, what kind of uh, fighter weapon concept uh, follow up uh, or, or next uh, round of uh, five or six uh, generation combat aircraft. So far, even the United States has no concrete concept of a six uh, generation combat aircraft. Uh, of course, well, there are some idea uh, that is uh, the mixture of uh, unmanned and uh, manned uh, combat uh, uh, aircraft to mix, uh, to fight under the uh, central, central network warfare uh, concept. But uh, so far, uh, even the United States has no uh, concept of a six, next generation, next generation of combat aircraft flying F-22 uh, and F-35. And uh, we have a lot of, uh, quite frankly, uh, discussion among uh, specialists and in uh, uh, defense industry. Um, but, uh, well, as you know, we uh, have to uh, explore the uh, chance to uh, uh, find out uh, the next uh, uh, fighter weapon system uh, after the F-2 will be retired, will be will be retired. Um, that, that is a more serious agenda. 
Then uh, we have uh, how to deal with F-15 and uh, uh, whether we should uh, procure the additional uh, 35 or not, and and also uh, and uh, also uh, we uh, have to explore the some uh, chance to uh, uh, develop a new uh, fighter weapon system to replace uh, next uh, five generation of uh, combat aircraft or not. So we have uh, many uh, agenda and criteria. Uh, we we have we have no conclusion yet. Uh, Professor Mon Morimoto, um, on Monday, um, the Joint Chief of uh, the Chief of Staffs, uh, Admiral Kawana, was sitting in the chair you're sitting in, and in response to a question from Isabel, who's sitting over there, about the Constitution, uh, he made some comments which have caused a bit of a stir. He said he would be um, grateful if there was a constitutional reform that recognised. Uh, gave status to the self-defense forces. Um, I think the word he used in Japanese was arigatai. Um, I'd like to ask you what do you think about constitutional reform, what you would like to see um, come from any constitutional reform, and do you think a goal of achieving this in by 2020 is realistic? Uh. <laughs> Uh, Kawana-san's remarks is very uh, personal, uh, very personal uh, uh, comment, and uh, uh, I don't think uh, uh, this is uh, official uh, remarks uh, for uh, Defense Ministry. But uh, <coughs> my uh, uh, understanding of uh, constitution is carried out uh, Yomiuri Shimbun two days ago. If you look at uh, my article, please read very carefully. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> but frankly, uh, uh, I, uh, my, my remarks too much uh, uh, in, a, in a political sense. But uh, this is very frank, my feeling. Maybe uh, it's quite a different from prime ministers. And also uh, uh, mm, quite a different with the LDP uh, guideline, LDP guideline. But that, is, that was my uh, personal belief. We cannot change my personal belief. So uh, <laughs> uh, too much frank. Uh, comment. Uh, so um, again, uh, please read my uh, remarks very carefully. Uh, yes. Thank you. I think we have one chance for last question. And uh, okay, uh, then let me ask. Take advantage of the time. I would ask. Mr. Warnage, what is the very specific characteristic of this uh, mast uh, show this time compared to all other, you know, military equipment fairs in the world? What is the specialty about Japanese uh, event? And we know Japan is a is a top technology uh, top technology country. So, shall we expect something special this time? Well, we, we are Japan's only international defense trade show and conference, um, so that, that really is a USP. Um, I, I, I think we fairly closely mirror the objectives of, of ATLA, to be honest, in, in helping um, Japan explore opportunities elsewhere. Um, we're, we're not a political event, but obviously it's, it, it's a good framework for, for discussions on you know, how best to address issues in South China Sea. And, uh, clearly a topic uh, of, of prominence is missile defense. So we have a lot of experts joining the group. Um, as I said earlier, we have some very high level VIPs 
that are able to, to discuss those matters at a very high level. So um, I, you won't see a gathering, uh, such an international gathering of, of leading operators and technologists, certainly not in Japan. Well, uh, just uh, say that uh, uh, why the mass uh, meeting will be uh, uh, has been uh, held in in Japan. Uh, I think this is uh, exclusive maritime uh, issues, and uh, we hope that uh, we uh, I would like to explore the maritime cooperation. Uh, between Europe and the uh, Asian Pacific regions uh, on not only uh, uh, operation, m maritime operation, but also uh, some uh, mm, planning and, and uh, equipment and technology. I think this is a sp specific nature of mass uh, conference, uh, which has been held and uh, is going to help uh, in Japan. Thank you very much. Thank you, this wraps up our event. I would like to take this uh, great opportunity to extend one honorary membership to our guest, uh, uh, to this uh, club, uh, Professor Morimoto. Thank you for coming. And Jim, well, thank you very much. Please come to our club at any time within a year and give us more insights about the thank future. You. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for attending. Please stay around. Uh, we have some uh, refreshment and uh, you know, open discussion uh, for about one hour. Thanks. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you.